Hello friends, in this video we shall learn about adenomyosis. Adenomyosis is defined as the benign ingrowing of endometrial tissue into the myometrium at least to about one lobe of field from the basal layer of endometrium. This figure shows the pictorial representation of a normal uterus while this one represents adenomyosis of uterus which will have endometrial tissue in the myometrium. Adenomyosis is mostly seen in elderly women, multiparous women, young women with infertility and it usually does not occur before menarche and regresses after menopause. This condition may be seen coexisting with uterine fibromyomas, pelvic endometriosis and endometrial carcinoma. The etiopathogenesis is not exactly known but estrogen, progesterone and pituitary hormones like GH and prolactin is found to play a role. It involves the invagination of the basal endometrium. Looking at the gross features, there is diffuse symmetric enlargement of the uterus which is seen mostly on the posterior wall and the size is usually not more than 12 to 14 weeks of a gravid uterus. Adenomyosis is of two types, the diffuse adenomyosis and the localized adenomyosis. In diffuse adenomyosis, the endometrial tissue is present diffusely in the myometrium, while in localized adenomyosis, circumscribed focus of endometrial tissue in the myometrium is seen. In diffuse adenomyosis, both the anterior and posterior uterine walls are involved there is thickening of the myometrium and presence of hemorrhagic foci. While localized adenomyosis is also called as adenomyoma, grossly mimicking leomyoma, but unlike leomyoma, there is no capsule and there is no distinct plane of resection. If there is protrusion into the uterine cavity, it is known as submucous adenomyoma or adenomyomatous polyp. The cross-section of the gland shows trabaculated appearance and visible blood spots. Microscopically, there is the presence of glandular tissue surrounded by stromal cells in the myometrium. Ectopic endometrium is located deeper than the endometrial junction by more than one low power field and areas of endometrium may show proliferative, hyperplastic and secretory changes during the menstrual cycle. The risk factors include multiparity, previous uterine surgery or trauma, for example DNC, induced abortion, etc. Looking into the clinical features of adenomyosis, it is usually asymptomatic, but the symptoms may include heavy menstrual bleeding, dysmenorrhea which is of congestive type, chronic pelvic pain, and dyspareunia or painful intercourse. Abdominal examination may reveal a hypogastric mass arising out of the pelvis and occupying the midline. On pelvic examination, an enlarged uterus without any restriction of mobility and a tender uterus is observed. When adenomyosis is clinically suspected, a transvaginal USG is done to rule out other conditions and to look for the diagnostic features of adenomyosis. The USG may show thickening of the uterine wall, myometrial cysts, loss of clear endometrial border, and localized lesions. Hypoechoic areas in the USG shows adenomyosis and myometrial cyst is a specific feature in the USG in case of adenomyosis. Color Doppler sonography is used to differentiate adenomyosis from myoma. MRI is done for confirmation of the diagnosis. But an MRI is required only when conservative treatment is preferred. Hypoechoic or anechoic areas are seen. A junctional zone of greater than or equal to 12 mm is diagnostic and that less than 8 mm excludes the diagnosis.
endometrial sampling may be required to rule out existent endometrial carcinoma or hyperplasia especially in older patients management of adenomyosis the treatment depends upon the patient's age desire for future fertility and the severity of the symptoms the management can be either medical or surgical in medical management nsaids for dysmenorrhea and heavy menstrual bleeding is used the response is usually temporary and inadequate and is generally used while awaiting surgery or the diagnosis is not yet confirmed combined ocps gives a minimal response danosol is an attenuated androgen and is used in the reduction of uterine size and heavy menstrual bleeding GnRH analogs are used for reduction of uterine size and volume but the symptoms recur after discontinuation and is used only prior to the surgery. Marina IUCD is levonorgestrel releasing IUS. Surgical management includes definitive and conservative management. Definitive management is by hysterectomy which may be abdominal, vaginal or laparoscopic. Conservative management includes adenomyomectomy which is resection of adenomyoma uterine mass reduction or myometrial resection which is done in case of diffuse adenomyosis hysteroscopic endometrial resection which is done in case of submucosal or polypoid adenomyosis and transcervical endometrial resection which is done as a treatment of abnormal uterine bleeding